this video is going to be different. We're going to learn about something other than neural networks for once. By the way, if you need a refresher on neural networks, just check the second link in the description. So that means we're not going to talk about deep learning today, which gets all the attention these days. Deep learning is just the field of AI that's focused specifically on neural networks, a type of model that's far more powerful than simple statistical models like linear regression. By the way, it's a small technicality, but technically deep learning is a subfield of ML and ML is a subfield of AI. So today we're going to talk about the k-means algorithm, which is a classical ML method that does not fall under deep learning. Sometimes neural networks are overkill. For simple ML problems, neural networks are not necessary. And that means we can build a high accuracy model without neural networks. We prefer this when possible since training neural networks is expensive and time consuming. Let's say we have a thousand data points of information about dogs and each data point contains five numbers describing a particular dog, their weight, height, tail length, etc. But for each dog, we have no idea which breed they belong to. In other words, our data is unlabeled. Can we create an algorithm that groups the similar dogs together? Beforehand, we must decide how many groups or breeds there might be. We'll call this variable k. And let's represent each dog from the dataset as a vector with five entries. We want the similar dogs to end up in the same group or breed. Let's start off by randomly assigning each dog to one of our k different groups or clusters. And over some number of iterations, let's update which group each dog belongs to. And at the end, the similar dogs will be assigned to the same group or breed. Here's what the final output of the algorithm, after it finishes running, might look like for the case where k equals 3 and we only have two attributes for each dog, attribute 1 on the x-axis and attribute 2 on the y-axis. But we've been treating this algorithm like a black box. At each iteration, how do we actually update which group or breed each dog belongs to? Step 1. Calculate the average vector of each group. Step two, store the average as the centroid. Step three, assign each dog to the group whose centroid is nearest. Step four, repeat. Let's talk about step one. By the way, if you're still watching the video, then I know you're not just mindlessly scrolling through YouTube and that you're actually interested in ML. You're the kind of person I want to join my ML community, which you can read about at the second link in the description. Back to step one. Before the algorithm, we randomly assigned each dog to a group where the groups are indexed from 1 to k. To calculate the mean of each cluster, we simply average all the vectors assigned to a given group together. Specifically, this average is done element by element for all the vectors, and the resulting vector is called the centroid of that group. In the image from earlier, the black dots are the centroids for each cluster after the algorithm finishes. But while the algorithm is running, each dog isn't necessarily assigned to the nearest center. The photo below should clarify what that means. We start off with totally random clusters and centroids, and after each iteration, the centroid approximations get better. At each iteration, we assign each data point to the group whose centroid is nearest, which reshifts the centroids, and this process repeats. Let's focus on the final blue cluster. Initially, that cluster centroid was here. After reassigning data points based on the closest centroid, that cluster centroid shifted over here. We performed one more iteration and nothing changed, so we knew the algorithm concluded. Let's talk briefly about step three. We want to assign each dog to the nearest center or to the nearest cluster. That means we need to calculate the distance between every data point and each of the K centroids so that we can find which cluster is closest to each data point. We can simply use the distance formula, which looks like this for two-dimensional data and looks like this for five-dimensional data. After enough iterations, which could be hundreds or thousands, the k-means algorithm is complete. There are other clustering algorithms, but k-means is the simplest one. Let's say you're working with a new data set, and there are no labels. You might want to gain an initial understanding about your data, or group the data points into buckets. K-means might be the best place to start. There are also many efficient implementations of K-means, and leave a comment if you'd be interested in a video breaking down the code. I hope you found the break from deep learning interesting, and I'll see you soon.